This is Colin Johns. He has two mind-blowing dinking strategies that I guarantee will majorly improve your game, no matter what your level is. Him and his brother Ben are without a doubt the best dinkers in all of pickleball. Not only are they the most consistent, but they're the best at making their opponents feel uncomfortable when they're at the net. So without further ado, let's open the playbook and start with dinking strategy number one from pro Colin Johns. Strategy number one is using the front half of the kitchen. You wanna use the front half of the kitchen whenever you're in a defensive position. Notice how either team neutralizes the point by using the front half of the kitchen. Specifically pay attention to the near left side player when he is pulled out wide, how he puts the ball short in the kitchen and up the middle. Right here he's pulled out wide, drops it short in the kitchen. Very, very smart play. Now as the near right side player, I decide to speed up the ball, but I'm not ready for it to come back. Had I been, it would have been an easy put away. A lot of us have a tendency to speed up balls when we're on our back foot or when we're scrambling. This doesn't end well 99% of the time. And this is because whenever you're off balance and you're speeding up the ball, you're leaning backwards, which automatically puts your paddle face open, which as a result feeds your opponent a big huge overhead or just a sidearm smash. So for this point, watch near right side, which is me. I make an ill-advised speed up decision when he hits it super short into the kitchen. It actually dribbles over the net. Instead, I should neutralize the point by putting this ball back short into the kitchen. I really lucked out there. So what we need to do instead, while we're in this defensive position, is simply dink the ball and try to get it in that first half of the kitchen. So we go from a defensive position to now a neutral position. In order for them to be offensive from this position, they have to hit the ball up because the net is in the way. So if they choose to be offensive, you're just gonna end up hitting an overhead or an easy counter right back at their feet. So this point is a really good example of neutralizing the point, using the front half of the kitchen to start everything over. I'm pretty sure everybody in the clip ends up using the front half of the kitchen at some point What a shot. So here are three circumstances in which you would wanna use the front half of the kitchen. The first is when your opponent pulls you way out wide. In this position, the optimal spot to go is going to be up the middle of the kitchen, and more specifically, in the first half of the kitchen. A higher risk shot would be trying to take that ball back cross court, and it's even more difficult to keep that ball in the front half of the kitchen. The absolute worst spot to go would be up the line because that's a very easy ball to Ernie. So the way that we can neutralize the point when we're pulled way out wide is to hit the front half of the kitchen up the middle of the court. So throughout this point, pay close attention to the near side right player, AJ. He does a fantastic job of neutralizing the point by not only hitting it short into the kitchen, but also utilizing the middle of the court. So right here, he's pulled out wide, hits it up the middle, neutralizes the point. We're back at zero again. Same thing there. Unfortunately, I was unable to get out of the way of that one. <laughs> the second circumstance is when our opponents hit our inside leg or our backhand leg. This is a very difficult spot to get offensive, so the only thing that makes sense is to use that front half of the kitchen, neutralize the point, and then try to set up something after that. So in this example, the far side player with the orange shirt decided to be offensive on a ball that I hit at their backhand side, where I pulled them very far out wide, and they end up setting me up for an ATP. The third and most common by far is when our opponents hit their dinks really low to where they're not bouncing up very high. From this position, it's not gonna make sense to speed up the ball because you're gonna to have to hit it up and again, they're gonna hit an overhead. And also it doesn't make sense to use the back half of the kitchen because it's a higher risk shot. Since it is so low, it's a lot more difficult to dink that ball. Whereas with the higher ball, it's gonna be a lot easier to use the second half of the kitchen. So this point's a pretty good example of speeding up a ball that's probably too low since it doesn't bounce higher than the plane of the net. Right here, easily countered, easily reset, and then now the point's over. Now you're not gonna show up to your rec game tomorrow or this week and be able to hit the front half of the kitchen consistently over and over and over again, or make the right decision to hit the front half of the kitchen. What that will come down to is getting in reps and drills with it. And in fact, if all that I did was rec play, then I would still be a 4-0. The reason that I made it to the 5-5 level is from drilling. So whether you use the Pickleball Drills app or you get out and create your own drills, the most important thing is that you just get out and drill because the more reps that you get in, the better player that you're gonna become. 
If you would like to try out the Pickleball Drills app, I'll link it here or here. Tons of regularly uploaded drills that will help you to improve your game every single day and have fun while you're doing it. That brings us to Colin John's second dinking tip. And you've probably guessed what it is, but it's utilizing the second half of the kitchen and beyond. A lot of us have a tendency as soon as we get a high ball to automatically speed that ball up with all of our might. The only problem with that is it's very predictable. So since our opponents are expecting a speed up, chances are they're gonna be ready for that speed up and they can easily counter the ball. After all, it is pickleball, so the ball comes back a lot more often than in other sports. So I'm not saying to all the time, whenever you get a high ball, to use the second half of the kitchen and not speed up the ball, but it can be a great change up to cause your opponents to pop the ball up even higher to where it's just an easy and simple put away. So in this point, I get absolutely smoked by the far side player with the orange shirt because instead of them speeding up the ball, they choose to dink it and they utilize that back part of the kitchen right here and then again right there. The reason that you wanna use the second half of the kitchen is because it automatically puts your opponents into a defensive position and causes them to have to hit into the front of the kitchen, which is probably the most difficult spot to hit consistently. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, why don't they just hit it back deep into the kitchen again? And that's because it's a high risk, high reward shot. It's a lot more difficult to hit that ball deep than it is to hit that ball short. It's a lot easier to pop the ball up from that position. So you wanna to try to keep it as shy into the kitchen as possible when you're in that defensive position. So as soon as I get a high ball, I'm trying to pull the ball behind my opponents and keep it beyond that line near their feet. So notice how throughout this point, I utilize high balls as opportunities to hit it behind my opponents and control the kitchen line. Thankfully, my partner has the eyes of a god because I would have definitely hit that. So in conclusion, use the back part of the kitchen when you see a ball that you can be offensive with and use the front half of the kitchen when you see a ball that you need to be defensive with. In this example, the far right side player does an excellent job of utilizing the kitchen instead of a speed up up the middle because the speed up up the middle is probably gonna get creamed, but instead they utilize that wide angle and it's just an absolute smoking shot. Doesn't take a lot of effort, but it's wide open. In this clip, it's another great example of premature attackulation. So speeding up a ball that is short in the kitchen, it's probably going to go about 10 feet out, uh, but sometimes it works out. You know, sometimes people just get a paddle on it, which I can't blame them because I would probably do the same. That's everything for this video. Comments are welcome as always. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. And if you're wanting to get better at pickleball, watch this video right here. In it, I go into depth on five specific things that you need to start doing to get really good at pickleball in 2024. See you guys on the next one. If you want to have fun and improve your game at the same time, download the Pickleball Drills app. Regularly uploaded drills to help you feel game like pressure, all while rapidly improving your consistency. For access, click the top link in the description of this video.